What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 46 of the Good Kraken Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Arnell Pearson, alongside the five-star man, Devin Stanford. Hello. <laughs> sick boy. <laughs> little sick boy. My yeah, little I sick know. baby. My, right. my voice finally just came back, really. For the most part, you can hear a little bit of a crackle, but yeah. It's yeah. been a fun last couple days. <laughs> yeah, dude. In the meantime, uh, we got the Crimson Chin, Garrett Geegan. Hey, do you guys know what a bro uses to cut down a tree? What? I saw that. <laughs> I hate it, and I love it at the same time. <laughs> now, back to Devin real quick. Dude, so you've been sick for the past couple of days, and you've been sleeping and playing Destiny and sleeping some more. Let, let's, let's dig into this a little bit, okay? What, what do you think got you sick? Because, like, let's be real here. Right, like nobody just gets sick for no reason. You know what I mean? Bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> some, I don't some, know. Like some, that sometimes. Well, I, my whole my whole job is going to people's houses and being outside a lot of the time. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, because it's quite, it's quite literally <laughs> just a sore throat, right? Like you don't have a chest cold it, or like. I'm sniffly. I am sniffly. I feel I feel that uh, that back throat creep, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm that saying? That is literally the worst. <laughs> the wor- <laughs> one way to describe that problem. <laughs> the wor- <laughs> literally the Y'all worst. Y'all ever heard of the way. drip? <laughs> okay. All right. Garrick, Ooh. you you haven't been here in a while, my friend. How have you been, dude? Good man. They're just like just they just been doing weird shit with my work schedule, so I've been MIA. But hey, it's super sick. I get to be here on the Tuesday and Saturday episode this week. So Yes, Woo! I know. It's lit, dude. It's gonna be a lot. You know it's also super sick. You? You? <laughs> I was gonna say your Rocco's Modern Life t shirt. Oh, thanks for yeah, noticing. Yeah, dude. dude. That... It's actually got like a way cooler graphic on the back. I'm sad it's not on the front. It's just the fact that it says Rocco's Modern Life. And it's there. That's, I love it. Yeah, that's more than enough. Honestly, <laughs> got to represent. Dude, what? and that that blue, that little teal blue you got going. Yeah, fire. Is is that is that a Walmart bike? Because like I have a couple like uh like Nickelodeon shirts that were definitely like Walmart buys. Like <laughs> uh, this one was. I I, I want to say this one was Target. I'm pretty sure this was Ooh, like a Target buy. Okay, you okay. said it wrong. You said it wrong. Oh, RJ, it was a Target buy. Excuse me. There excuse you go. me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife got this for me from Darcy. Oh wow, you had to Ooh, make it Ooh, with the little whisper, <laughs> extra bougie. Oh my god, dude! But that's not yeah. what happens here. We are not bougie, my friends. I guess we are no. good cracking. <laughs> and today we're talking good people getting good things, bad takes being bad takes, classic gamer questions, and much, much more. Because this. Is the Good Kraken Podcast, your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news, reviews, and discussions that you want to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. If you're watching live, you can submit questions and topics at tinyurl.com slash GK submissions to be a part of the show. And if you're having a good time so far, you can watch us record the show live and ad-free by following and subscribing right here at twitch.tv slash goodcrackenshow. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime, and we would love for you to give that to us and help keep us pushing content out for all of you listening and watching at home, just like Big Husky is right now. Big Husky, baby, how you doing? How you doing, dude? It's good to see you again. Uh, But if you've emptied your pockets for the latest and greatest in entertainment, that is totally fine. You can catch our episodes on your podcast service of choice at 8 a.m. the next day. But you can also support us by going to our YouTube channel by clicking the link down there in the About section of our Twitch page and clicking that beautiful bell and big red button or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken with an exclamation mark and leaving a review there. Dad! We have some plan to work, my friend. All right, a couple little things here for you guys, okay? You <laughs> flipped out so hard. I didn't even know <laughs> oh, yeah, my I name. Do, I, do, I totally <laughs> I'm like, did he just mean to say my name? Yeah, I think. Oh, he clipped out. So, yeah, I was loud. I'm sorry. It's that was so loud. Bad. Uh, good old Discord. Uh, please go watch episode 45 of the Good Kraken podcast. That was from Saturday. Me and Devin 
got to look back on some of our summer gaming predictions that we had from uh, back earlier in April. I believe it was that we did that episode originally. Oh, man, it was it was fun to see Devin won. Spoiler alert. Devin won our predictions contest by two and a half points. It was late. We were close. It was a close ball game. But Devin came out on top with a nice sneaky little counter move that he predicted earlier on this year. But neither of us did that great. Like, <laughs> like we both we both had some pretty solid predictions, but there's a lot of misses that we came into. Hopefully next year we'll have a better time, including Garrick here, who will be on it next year. It's going to be a fun fucking time. My yeah. guy, fun fucking time. Also, please follow, review our podcast channel. Uh, we're trying to break the algorithm, get our podcast into more ears, get our faces into more faces, into more eyes <laughs> that you guys have. <laughs> I, I broke that. I that. feel like I need to add consensually at the end there. Mm, yes, of course. That's just a given. That's just a given. We would yeah. never yeah. consensually put our faces in someone else's faces in their eyes. Oh, yeah. That my personal space. We will be. We we, no, we will be in. <laughs> Use hashtag Twitch do better and hashtag sub off Twitch on Twitter. Support the movement tomorrow. We will be talking about it a little bit more in depth later. Uh, but tomorrow we will not be streaming in support of a day off Twitch, uh, which is in support of these two movements here. Uh, there's a lot of marginalized, underrepresented creators that are getting hate rated every goddamn day. Fuck you guys. Uh, so we're taking a break of Twitch. We're not even going to go looking at Twitch streams tomorrow. Okay. We're just going to be kicking it. It's more than likely playing Destiny and raising my child and uh, playing more Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> more than likely it's gonna be a good oh, time man. regardless dude it's gonna be good Devin, could you please give me the best nolan you can do that's good that was <laughs> to watch it was unenthusiastic but you didn't clip at all like it was, it was whatever you did there just make happier next time it'll be perfect you know what i'm saying Devin, a tide is coming in can you please handle little waves for me my friend yeah so um yeah some breaking little waves you know mm. we're breaking the tide mm. right now yes you know what I'm yes yes um poison ivy is cast in the cw's batwoman mm. so I have yet to watch Batwoman, but Poison Ivy has always been one of my more favorite villains for more reasons than one. But yes. <laughs> so real quick, I have a question about this. Wasn't Batwoman on like this that app streaming service they had, but it's not anymore? It's on the actual CW now? It's on the yeah. actual CW. Yes. Yes. Just but it like didn't start there, right? No. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the uh the um, same thing with uh, Titans, how HBO Max picked up Titans when it originally was just on the DC web series. Yeah, yeah. Oh, most, okay. most all of them were yep. just DC web series. I think I think Supergirl was the same, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm, most... Maybe. I don't know. I don't know enough about DC. Su Supergirl be might have been so. a spinoff of the new Superman show, but, you know, either way. Uh, yeah, I think it was vice versa, actually. Oh, maybe that's true, huh? That's true. Anyways, yeah, yeah uh, uh, Poison Ivy is being played by Bridget Reagan, um, mm -hmm. who honestly looks the part. She's got crazy curly red hair, and she 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 just looks it. She just looks it. Red hair on the chat. What's happening, dude? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks the part. I'm excited for it. Devin, continue on, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. This one I'm kind of excited about. Texas Chainsaw Massacre rights have now been picked up by Netflix. I am fucking hype on this shit right here boys yeah who shit i could definitely see so, netflix doing justice to that honestly lots of movies or series so this is actually the next uh texas chainsaw massacre reboot uh or technically sequel it's a direct sequel of the original one was supposed uh. to hit theaters but instead they're ex streaming exclusively through Netflix the same way Godzilla did oh. with HBO Max. That's what this is. Oh. Okay. Yo, what's up, Red? 
It's going to be good. Dude. I'm so stoked. Continue, Devin. I don't know anything yeah. about that. No. Um, Disney's hold, hold Jungle on. Cruise hold sequel. On. Hold <laughs> on. Hold on. No, I, don't, pause, I don't know anything pause. about this. Hold Real on. Real fucking quick. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. Devin, you motherfucker. <laughs> you did not make a make rib <laughs> command. <laughs> Just to say. <laughs> oh my god oh my god and it, hold on for our listeners at home our, our audio listeners at home Devin made a make rib command for our twitch and it says in response we hear fam of good kraken say the <laughs> say, <laughs> say the make rib sucks and if you like it, you're dog water and use Dollar Tree headphones. The fucking disrespect, bro. I fucking can't. I, you used like no punctuation. <laughs> that should have been there. I know. I know. I fucking hate this place. Yeah. So much. <laughs> Ah. Devin, just fucking go. Just go, my dude. I'm sorry. I had to acknowledge your bullshit for a fucking second again. <laughs> oh my god. Go, go, goddammit. Disney's Jungle Cruise sequel confirmed. And they have been saying there's no McRibs in that movie. Cause there are, there's not. There's not a single McRib in that movie. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, haven't, I haven't seen the first one yet. So Garrett, Garrett has. I was gonna ask you, Garrett. Do you, what, how does this do anything for you, or like? So here's the thing. I'm a little torn on it because the movie was really good and I did enjoy it. But the thing is, is like it doesn't need a sequel. Like it really doesn't. Like the the story ha- it has like a nice, nice, neat, wrapped up little ending. It's very you know its own thing. They left it open in such a way that a sequel could be possible, but it it definitely doesn't need one. So okay, okay. well I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Continue on. Yeah, we'll see. Devin. We got another uh, Netflix little wave here. Um, season three of You, the release date has been revealed for October fifteenth. Now Have this show is good. Show? Oh my god, this show is good. Oh my but- god. Fuck, does it creep me out sometimes? Oh my god, Garrick, have you please tell me you've watched these? I haven't watched it. My wife is absolutely obsessed with it, dude. It's kind of like uh it makes me really uncomfortable that sort of stuff does for some reason. Like I don't Yeah. Like it gives me the it gives me the heebie jeebies, maybe a little triggering, I guess. I don't know. I like the stalkery stuff always like I'm just like, dude, I can't like it's it's Dexter as fuck. It's it's as Dexter as you get without being Dexter. Um Dexter's true. I love it. I love it. Dexter's a better concept, but it's really hard for me to say that it's a better show. That that's a pretty good way to put it. Honestly, Dexter does have yeah. a better like sort of overall like plot going on, but you is just mm-hmm. better produced, I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Continue I have on. high hopes for the for the Dexter uh final <sighs> real final season. I'm begging I'm begging them to nail that. I'm yeah, really like yeah. needing them to do that. Anyways. <laughs> um I'll finish that show at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Ed Asner, star of Pixar's Up, has passed away at the age of 91. Rest in power, good sir. <sighs> yeah, dude, Rest in power, dude. man. I yeah. Big love up. Big love up to Big Ed here. Uh yeah, old guy from Up. Unfortunately, breaks my heart. Uh, he was yeah. he was getting old though. Thankfully, he he died. Ninety one's a good run. Ninety you, oh, 91's a very it's longer longer than I'll probably live. <laughs> he's he's, he's yeah. he he killed it. He killed it. He passed away with his family yeah. there. Thankfully, he was he was he was getting old. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on the pick on the uh, subject of death. Candyman slashes through the box office competition with a strong twenty two point three million opening weekend. Great segue? Question mark. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just reading them. You know, they're back to back in the notes. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Xander coming in. Andy says I said he tried to make rib. Let's go. 
God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, so Candyman has been killing it. Um, and actually, fun fun fact for our listeners and viewers at home, uh, the director for Candyman was vehement about making sure Candyman came through in theaters alone because she was very much like convinced that Candyman was only going to be its most successful in theaters and it was overall a theater experience uh so she stood on that ground and well 22.3 million opening weekend is uh pretty good for a you know standalone movie so Absolutely. get on them get on them so um Fortnite adds Will Smith's Mike Lowry character from Bad Boys. It's always interesting <laughs> that this child sh like game keeps getting people, you know, like the Grim Reaper, Keanu Reeves, John Wick. Mm -hmm. Now horror, we got our movies. Yeah, like mm -hmm. Mike Lowry from Bad Boys. Like it's it's always interesting that these things happen. Like I can understand, you know, Avengers or like DC or Star Wars or anything like that. And uh yeah, I cool. I guess. I mean, I guess. I guess yeah. they. Do, I guess they are maybe trying to just give something to their adult fans, possibly. Which I guess I can kind of get, but uh, it still seems like a stretch. <laughs> Nobody asked. I don't feel like there was a clamoring for a Mike Lowry skin. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Not at all. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, th there is little to no reason for this, unless they're trying to set up a like Will Smith verse in. Fortnite, like there's yo will smith concert in Fortnite, calling it right now i will be front and center boy let's go like like i feel a part of me feels like if we went around and asked people who their favorite will smith character mike lowry and bad boys would maybe be like bottom 10 percent like i don't think he's like anyone's no, favorite will even, smith like no. why no, did my, they 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 could have given us so many different Will Smiths. Why did they pick Mike Lowry from Bad Boys? <laughs> they could have given us Deadshot Will Smith from Su Suicide Squad. Really? And that would have made sense. And that would have um, made sense. Or super jacked Dr. Robert Neville from I Am Legend. Ooh, that'd be a good one. There you go. Or, or Hancock, Hancock Will Smith. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Let's go, Devin. I do. Let's go, dude. I know. I know. Devin, continue on. Yeah. I'm sure this one made you pucker right up and you got excited, Ernell. Netflix revives Manifest for one last season after Let's NBC cancel a show. Go! I'm so hype on this bullshit show, dude. Like, I, I cannot, dude. I gotta get Faven on 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 here literally for just a second to be like fucking let's go manifest is back <laughs> because this, this show is the dumbest most wonderful thing <laughs> i've ever experienced and i'm so excited i'm so excited Gary, did you get a chance Isn't to watch it show where the people on the the plane just yeah. like disappear yeah no and they, i and they come back and they have superpowers ridiculous. i was like <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> it's so good, dude. It's how so good. in the what the fuck even is sort of premise is that? Uh, how perfection. does how does disappearing perfection. in a super plane give you superpowers? They they haven't figured it out. That's why we need one last season. <laughs> Wait, the superpowers? Kind of, kind of, kind of. Yeah, kind of superpowers. Yeah, yeah. It it it, okay. it kind of goes in that direction. But we need one more season so we can find out the secret. Is it like it. heroes oh. when they can only use their powers once every seven episodes? No, it's <laughs> it's it's like they they all have like everyone who was on the plane has a like mental connection with each other where they can all sort of like passively communicate with each other through mm -hmm. like telekinesis I guess you could say um but some of Bro, them I don't want my Sense line eight. link with a bunch of fucking strangers <laughs> Sense 8 but all right um yeah anyways so, yeah, anyway. on the segue to to uh <laughs> airplanes disappearing aliens fire team elite shoots to number 1 in UK <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god boys we didn't play this game we didn't play this game I was trying to fucking no, talk didn't. to you guys about it I was trying to convince you guys on it, but no, I don't want to spend the money on it. I know. We ended up, yeah. <laughs> Destiny. It's gotten good Destiny. reviews. 
This Destiny. came out, th- but this came out the, like way early in the week. You fuckers, you fuckers. You know I've been mean? playing Destiny for a week now. You know what I mean? Get off my ass. You know I mean, you know what I mean. God damn it! No, is it on? Is it on Game Pass or is it like a Steam purchase? It's a purchase. <sighs> Just, I want everything to just be on Game Pass now. Like, Same. if it's not on Game I Pass, know, I'm just I like, know, oh, wait. I know. I know. I'll wait. I know. So, I, listen, I get it. I get it. Okay. I've heard good things about it. I will probably play it someday when it does come to Game Pass. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. That's fair. Um, speaking of Game Pass. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> because some of its properties are on Game Pass right now. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. The first images of the cast have been revealed and I have mixed feelings. I don't know about you guys, but their are costumes you, Are you sure? Are you sure? You yeah. Uh, the costumes look like you walked into a Spirit Halloween and just bought the full costume. Oh, oh, that's and what it looks like. That's but, pretty rough. Yeah, that and I do not like the look of Leon at all. Mm-hmm. Like Leon does not look like Leon. So yeah, I just I'm already off already. I don't know about you guys, but I am not stoked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling up the image right now because I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Here, give me give me a second here because here's a deal, right? So like. <sighs> We boys, we gotta talk about I'm not this stoked. This is, I'm not this stoked. Is, this is a problem. Okay, this is a problem here. Um is he here see here here's the here's the thing, right? It's like <laughs> um <clears throat> ah, god damn it, I can't. Anyways, no, if if yeah, no, I'm not gonna bother. You know, gonna Yo, be this be looks like shit. This okay, guys, this this straight up looks like a bad porn parody. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, it so are you kidding yeah, me? It, like, it's like real bad cheap ass cosplay, dude. It looks the, the po- yeah. that police officer's <laughs> uniform is so bad. I will say this. Chris Redfield looks good. Chris Redfield looks like Chris Redfield. That's the he's the super jacked white dude, right? Obviously. I mean, and if that's not him and they use the skinnier guy like they did in the uh in the other I mean like is he dude, I just don't trust prison break? No, <laughs> no, dude, dude Le- Leon's not the super jack dude. Leon's a dude with the No, I black just said hair. Chris Redfield is oh, the oh, jack. My bad. No, yeah, dude, Redfield, my Redfield. My bad, my bad. My yeah. bad. I was Chris Redfield attention. looks was, like Chris Redfield. I was looking at this horror show. <laughs> yeah, is, look this... at this dude. This does not look like Leon. Look at this fucking piece of shit you're not leon dude I... get out of here theatrical <laughs> look, release look at this piece look at of this, shit look at this community college ass looking claire redfield right here this is you know we're doing the school play web series and we're gonna do resident evil school so that's, play that's, yeah. web series Insert your fucking high school here's rendition of resident evil 2 we're going to hire the local makeup art artist that worked on that one B-rate horror movie to make the fucking monster. I, I did not expect that we were all literally just going to shit all over this thing. But, uh, Garrick, to answer your question, this is, uh, I'm pretty sure, a Netflix. Uh, okay, that tracks. Yeah. Yeah. No, Netflix can do way better than that. Are you kidding me? They Lord, could, they but they don't yeah. most of the time. They choose not to. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me here. Let me actually, Devin, could you fact check that for me real quick while we move into the main news segments? I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, uh, IGN thing here right now. Okay. You do that. I'm going to continue on into our, uh, our main news segments here. Uh, these are the big conversations that we got going on. Um, so firstly, boys, obviously big, big news that we heard about the other day. Dr. Lupo will live stream exclusively on YouTube gaming going for this goes to dean takahashi at games b in a reads like this <sighs> professional gamer benjamin benjamin dr lupo lupo announced an exclusive live streaming deal with youtube gaming today uh the deal for the internet gaming celebrity is a blow to youtube rival twitch where dr lupo also has a big audience dr lupo already has 1.7 million subscribers on youtube and today's announcement strengthens dr lupo's presence there which is the largest gaming platform with over 100 billion hours of gaming content watched in 2020 
He will kick off his first ever YouTube live stream on August 31st. Dr. Lupo began a streaming career in 2015, and since then, he has built a community of more than 12 million followers. He has made a name for himself as one of the most generous streamers in the business by working with his community to raise millions for St. Jude over the years through his 24-hour charity stream, Build Against Cancer. His positive attitude, the philanthropic efforts, and passion for gaming has won a lot of attention and partnerships from public figures, celebrities, and brands. In addition to competing with some of today's most popular gamers, he has helped encourage voter registration with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, bantered with Borat, and created campaigns to global brands like Verizon and Gillette. Quote, we are working with a small subset of creators that illustrate the unique Offering YouTube gaming has has as the only gaming platform, excuse me, uh, to offer a comprehensive VOD live and short form video product offering, said Riot Wyatt. Ryan Wyatt, Jesus Christ, head of global gaming at YouTube in an email to GamesBeat. Uh, Loaded helped negotiate Dr. Lupo's deal with YouTube. In addition to Dr. Lupo, Loaded also represents Courage, uh, who was among the first gaming creators to sign an exclusive live stream deal with YouTube. Quote, we only have a handful of exclusive and dedicated streamers to the platform, which is consistent and in line with how other live streaming platforms work, said Wyatt. It's important for us to have a core group of live streamers who are working closely with our product and engineering teams at YouTube to create a world-class live streaming service made specifically for creators in mind with creators' input, end quote. Garrick, I want to start with you here. Have you dug into any Dr. Lupo streams? No, I'm actually, I know, I'm, you know, I know the name, obviously, but I'm not a huge Twitch watcher, so maybe this actually might encourage me to see more of his stuff now that he's going to YouTube. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think the the part of the part of this article that I found like the most interesting was that they kind of put an emphasis, like that nice little cap on the end of the article there, saying how they're really working, they're wanting to work directly with their creators uh, for their product and their engineering team. And I'm hoping that with that product piece that also means that they're going to be working with their content creators to like, you know, make their product safe for their users as well, which I think is going to be like a big thing moving forward, giving everything that's kind of going on with Twitch uh, at the moment. So if they're willing to take critical feedback from their own content creators with stride and with intent, uh, I've this, I feel like this is, this means like it's going to be a big, big change as far as like where people are going to start directing themselves to view whether they're, you know, whether they're going to be creating content or viewing on YouTube versus Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's totally fair. Devin, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, as we've been talking about quick, Twitch has kind of sucked lately. I mean, we're using the platform right now because this is where we have started to establish ourselves <laughs> in the climate, but they have not been taking care of their creators. And, um, you know, places like YouTube and Facebook gaming have been brought up a lot. Granted, um, I know Facebook gaming for the most part doesn't have as good as a uh, um, as like a video quality. You know, there's a lot of compression on their end and stuff like that. So it's it's less to be desired in that realm if you're looking to have a quality stream. Um, but YouTube has seemed like a good alternative, and there has been quite a few people who have switched over to YouTube already. Um, this seems like a, uh, you know, kind of similar to uh, Ninja leaving Twitch and going to Mixer, except YouTube is a more established thing that's always going to be around, where Mixer was just starting, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, Mixer yeah. had a chance. You know, they could they mm -hmm. could have done it, but I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I guess it just didn't get the love that it deserved. You look like you're going to jump in for a second, Garrick. I don't know. Yeah, I just think it's really interesting here how, like, I mean, obviously, YouTube, everybody knows that YouTube is owned by Google. Uh, and, like, Google's, you know, it, it's this massive conglomerate. And despite its size, like, they're still trying to, like, keep their projects independent like youtube is still youtube it's not youtube owned by google like it's just youtube and they have like their own teams and stuff that they're working on and so i feel like the way that they're treating this as far as like their approach to catering directly to their their like creators first 
and their viewers like and, let, and then letting the creators cater to their viewers is like that seems like the natural progression of how things should work you know like youtube should be at the top and then youtube should work with their creators to create a great experience for the creator and for the viewer and then they need to put those content creators in charge of making bringing those viewers in and so i feel like the, the way they're approaching this is it's it seems like a, a, a more sound business strategy than what twitch is doing lately which has been fucking nothing <laughs> and yeah, virtually so like it's just i'm interested to see where this goes because you know like as it states in the article like youtube is like the biggest gaming platform like a hundred billion hours is nothing to scoff at that's an insane amount of time viewed and you know like obviously like we use this platform because it's where we've been established but if if they're willing to you know listen to their con content creators like twitch is doomed because google's already established they're here yeah yeah i you worded it perfectly I, I don't really have anything else to follow up on that's that puts you know hammers that nail in um they twitch has to fucking figure it out man because youtube youtube gaming's on the goddamn rise they're on the rise they're gonna be coming after twitch and taking all their goddamn creators that they'll start figuring this mm -hmm. stuff out real goddamn quick um, yeah. in the meantime, Garrett, could you hit us with our second story for me, my friend? Yes, yes. Uh, Naughty Dog execs push back against unions, so they may, says they may not solve crunch. And this is by Otto, uh, Crate Key from GameSpot. The idea of game developers unionizing has been a hot topic in recent years, particularly in concerns around crunch, or developers working extreme amounts of overtime on a game became widespread. However, uh, Evan Wells and Neil Druckmann, the co-presidents of Naughty Dog, have pushed back against the idea of developers unionizing to solve crunch, saying that the workers banding together to de demand better treatment for their employments might not be the issue. Uh, Wells and Druckmann expressed their uh, skepticism that unions would solve crunch during a recent interview with Game Informer, in which Wells said, I don't know if unionization, uh, if that, that unionization would solve would be a solution to crunch, excuse me. Uh, Wells went on to say that employees being told they couldn't work more than uh, 40 hours a week would frustrate people to no end. Uh, there are people who really want to put in the time on the extra cost on their own volition, uh, of their own volition, oh, no, on, on their own volition, excuse me, and that they would feel handcuffed. The idea be, uh, behind crunch, though, is not that uh, it's not always mandated by an executive. Instead, it's a culture of pressure that weighs down on developers where a deadline is set and one worker can't take a day off because someone else would have to pick up their slack. In the same uh, in the same way, Wells says people would feel handcuffed to stop working. Crunch forces them to work in uh, extensively long weeks. Druckmann also co-wrote the, la uh, co the Last of Us 2, said during the interview that unionization wouldn't be a cure-all for Crunch. Uh, when you try to have a silver bullet like one solution, you're always leaving someone behind, said Druckmann. That's why we feel like we need multiple solutions. We have to approach this from multiple angles. Druckmann gave the example of some uh, of someone who would have to work during the weekend to compensate for a lost day during the work week of someone that's, uh, that would have been left behind. While Naughty Dog's with... My, oh, words today, guys. While Naughty Dog's most recent title, The Last of Us 2, has set multiple records for its high number of nominations and awards, the game's development cycle was also fraught with crunch. On the topic of developers at Naughty Dog uh, crunching, Druckmann said in June 2020's interview with GQ, they're, they're going to work very hard. We need to put in some guardrails in. Put some guardrails in, excuse me, so that uh, they don't injure themselves. But I don't think we could prevent them from working hard and still make the games that we make. One of the solutions that Druckmann may have been talking about could simply could simply be hiring more developers. Uh, Naughty Dog recently put out a sweeping list of job hires in its first uh, for its first standalone multiplayer title. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, so I want to start off by saying Crunch fucking sucks. Um, yeah, and as much as I love the games that Naughty Dog makes, and I love the work that Neil Druckmann put in to The Last of Us being some of my favorite video games ever in history, period, ever, Crunch fucking sucks, and I hate 
so much when executive faces, executive voices try to justify this shit. When right there at the very last sentence it says it could be talking about simply just hiring more people. Well, fucking hire more people. Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> like, God, it's, damn, it's like, I don't under, like, how much I've, money Naughty yeah, Dog brings in that shouldn't be an issue. It, exactly. I've managed businesses for the past decade, okay? They can hire more fucking people. If it's that big of a goddamn issue, if they don't want crunch as much as they're acting like they don't want crunch, they'll, they'll just fucking hire more people to join their goddamn team. And so now nobody has to fucking problem solved. Problem fucking solved. And if their worry is is having more people on, and so it loses creative justification for the ones that are there, I can promise you they're willing to sacrifice a little bit of creative cr- creative I like independence in order to see their goddamn families. Like it's just absurd right? to me that this is even like at all an argument for them and their perception. I don't know. Do you guys have any further thoughts on that? Because like, oh, yes, I have a few thoughts on this. This article kind of pissed me off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same. So there, there was like there was a particular piece like piece of this article that I really, really, really had a problem with. And it was uh, one of Druckmann's quote from from GQ, where he says uh, they're going to like, you know, they're going to work hard but, and we need to put in some guardrails so people don't injure themselves but I don't think we could prevent them from working hard and still make the games we make. That's fucking horseshit, bro. Make goddamn <laughs> realistic release expectations and take it to the fucking publishers who are pushing these dates. Don't push it back down on the devs who are creating the product for you. Take it to the fucking publishers and their shitty, you know, old white guy investors who are pushing back on them and, you know, set realistic expectations for what this game release is going to be. You can still make great games and not have to pump out a title every fucking year if it means working your employees into the dirt. You know, like, you know, that. you know who publishes Naughty Dog? Sony. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure it's yeah, an issue. Yeah, no, I like. I wouldn't what? disagree that this isn't an industry wide problem, and Sony's got its own big old blanket of issues that they've got. We're not even going to get into that. But like, I'm, it just I'm really bothered by like the fact that they basically just make it sound. Like they just don't like they're 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 like sugarcoating the fact that they don't give a shit about their employees. That's how I read this. Yeah. Yeah. Like on on, you know, that falling in line with, you know, publishing timelines and stuff like that, too. It's it's a lot of a lot of these crunch stories we hear are have been largely around Naughty Dog and other like Sony studios lately. And granted, it hasn't been as bad lately. I say as bad. There's still a lot of crunch where, you know, they're actually letting them do delays and stuff like that now. Like we see it most recently with Guerrilla Games Horizon Forbidden West, you know, that Sony could have put their foot down like they have done in the past and said, no, this game has to come out in the date. You know what I mean? Which so it's, they've done. God of War. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Go, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima is literally the only game, like Sucker Punch is the only ones mm-hmm. that have been able to come out as a big triple A like PlayStation title and say, we refused to crunch our teams, but it was a new IP. So like they were, they had way more availability for somebody to be like, Oh, you can take your little time. It's fine. Like nobody knows who the fuck you are yet. So it's fine. You can do it that way. But when it comes to like things like this, it's like that still shouldn't be an excuse. You know what I mean? There's tons, Mm -hmm. tons of studios that do not crunch their teams. Tons of them. And they still yeah. prove that you can not crunch your teams and come out with amazing games. Amazing games without fucking doing that. Sure, God of War and The Last of Us 1 and 2 are some of the most pivotal fucking video games in history. Sure. But could they have still gotten those results if they just had another year before they released? Would they have still been just as amazing if they came out a year later? Yeah. The answer is fucking Yeah. And so it's like, instead of trying to yeah. push your team to come out with a game within four years, turn it into six. Like, we can wait. It's fine. It's not, it's not like... Yeah, we have. Like, <laughs> yes, dude. Like, we just... You know, and as, you, as, as the consumers of your guys' fucking shit, like, we're okay with hanging out until it's ready and actually done. 
Like, you don't you don't want to give folks like us shitty unfinished content because then we're going to blast it all over the Internet about your <laughs> shitty unfinished content. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And then but I'm like, going to sit there and get in arguments with, you know, mouth breathing basement dwellers on IGN posts all the time because <laughs> they want you guys to crush. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. And I have I have one more fucking thing to say about this. Okay, then we can move me, on from hit this. Me, hit me. But like. So another thing that I was bothered by was just like the fact that they're just so against unionization only because they don't think it's going to be a solution to the crunch. That's another thing I have an issue with is that guess what? If their employees as a majority, as a majority want unionization, then yeah, it's probably going to leave some people out. But if that's what most of the people at your company are, are asking for, then you guys as the employers are obligated to try and make that happen. Because guess what? If it's a shit show and it doesn't work, unions can be dissolved, but you're, I feel like they're obligated to fucking try. Well, here's the deal yeah. too. As someone who's been a manager and I've worked very closely in HR departments and stuff, what I can tell you is a, a lot of it is very... A lot of the excuses that they present here about unions is very just at face value. What they aren't saying is that if they did unionize, they wouldn't be able to even have crunch be an option. And they and like that's the issue is like when it's not an option, they're not able to abuse it. And that like I want everyone who's right. listening to this right now, whether it's live on Twitch or later on audio or whatever thing, your managers at your work are going to utilize anything they can to abuse the availability they have on you. And you have to fucking say something. You have to draw a boundary with your work or don't fucking work there. Don't work there because if, they, if your managers have done it once, they're going to do it a million fucking times later on. Trust me. Trust me. I've had a, I've had district managers try to force me to make really shitty fucked up decisions as a manager. No, you can't. You have to draw fucking boundaries. And this is them just trying to make excuses. It's just it's just executive banter. They, they don't want to flat out say like we want to trap our employees into having to do crunch. We they don't want to say like we want to be able to. Vir like virtually blackmail our employees or guilt trip them because that's essentially all it is. It's like, oh, well. Steven, three offices down, fucking stayed until three o'clock in the morning last night. Why aren't you? If they unionize, right. they can't or say like, shit. Yeah, like you that. can take a day. You can take a day off, but uh, Charlie in the cubicle next to you will have to pick up your work. Like fuck yeah. that, bro. Yeah. Don't it's, hang that shit over your employees' heads. It's bullshit. We need unions in the goddamn games industry right now. Right now. Period. 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 That's. End of fucking story, my friends. With that said, we also need a lot more fucking things in this world because China sets a three hour limit for kids playing online video games. This comes from Taylor Lyles at IGN and it reads like this. Beginning September 1st, video game companies like NetEase and Tencent are required to limit online gaming to just three hours per week for minors, according to new rules imposed by Chinese regulators. As reported first by Bloomberg, children under the age of 18 will only be allowed to game for one hour between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as well as public holidays. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Additionally, game companies are required to restrict online gaming during these hours and must enforce a real name verification system in place, according to Reuters. This is not the first time video game limits were imposed in China. In 2018, Tencent implemented a similar system where enforced age checks and limited time spent on its mobile game Honor of Kings to one hour per day for children up to the age of 12. While children between the ages of 13 and 18 were restricted to playing for a maximum of two hours a day. The new regulations serve as a broad crock crackdown. I almost said crockdown. Crackdown on China's giant tech giants in addition crockdown. to combating crockdown in, in addition to combating game addiction in China. Roughly a month ago, a Chinese state-run publication published an article describing online gaming as quote unquote spiritual opium. Before removing the phrase, though, the National Press and Publication Administration noted that online gaming influences minors' have mental and physical health in its announcement post. These rules are only limited to online gaming and do not directly mention if non-online games will be restricted in this capacity. The new regulations also do not clarify whether or not console games and foreign titles will be required to comply with local regulations. <laughs> 
Spiritual opium. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Devin, in the chat. Fuck, Fuck you, Devin. <laughs> Fuck you, Devin. <laughs> Make Rim's dick. Make Rim's dick. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> anyways boys what are your thoughts on china being china i guess <laughs> what's your what are your thoughts on spiritual opium <laughs> bro who the fuck is this for that's what i'm that's what i want who's this for who's this for i don't understand who this is for who is this helping what is it trying what are they trying to accomplish also Dev like Devin. they only list like they only list like two companies bro yeah, because like, they're the only two companies that people from. They're, they're the only two companies other that shit. run video games in China. That's that's the issue. They're like the only two. So you can't even get into like, do they not have like? I legit know nothing about this, so I'm kind of going. No, no it's, it's like, fine. Yeah, yeah. Do no. they not go to like Nintendo or Sony games and just play those without time limits? So so NetEase and Tencent sort of handle publications of video games in China. So they like oh, as okay, far as like foreign even things like that. And so it's like the issue too is that like NetEase and Tencent also publish their own games. We look at Genshin Impact, so on and so forth, which is one of the biggest games in China. But that's kind of the issue is Genshin Impact, as a lot of our friends and stuff can attest to, is very addicting. And they're really kind of doing this as sort of trying to save the children sort of thing, I fucking guess, from spiritual opium. <laughs> OK, God, so here's it, this is communism. <laughs> Devin, so, God damn it. <laughs> so here's. With this being like a save the children thing, if that's if that's what they're really trying to go for, from right? spiritual opium, which is from yes. yeah, we're trying to save the children from the spiritual opium that is video game addiction. Yeah, the spiritual opium um, pandemic is like, obviously an issue. Yeah, if they're really if they really believe like gaming addiction in China to be like, you know, an epidemic. Mm -hmm. Then why mm -hmm. aren't they treating the source? Why are they treating the video games? Because like, I don't know about you guys, but like. You know, my childhood was kind of fucking ass. So I played <laughs> video games as a form of escape. And I'm sure a lot of you guys kind of have the same, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So which means, which tells me if China has a crippling video game addiction, there's a lot of escapism going on there. And there's probably some other things. Don't take away the one thing that's like keeping them sane. Uh, Morbid in the chat says, while I disagree with the government stepping in to control game times, I do think that children should have game times limited by parental figures as seen fit. As a game addicted child, my social skills suffered greatly because of it. Now I'm best friends with someone like Garrick. There you go. So fair enough. See, uh, exactly. I, There's I, I do... problems. <laughs> Devin, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say on that with uh, Xbox, for instance, with the uh, the app, you can actually limit your children's uh, playtime and accounts. And stuff like that. They have a lot of family settings already set in place through even on, the even on Xbox PlayStation ecosystem. You can do it yeah. on PlayStation yeah. too. And yeah. Yep. That's where so, I feel like this is an issue for parents, not the government. <laughs> well, well, it's China, so the government has to get involved in everything. It's so. it's China. Uh, you know, I, enough, I, know I, I know during our uh, uh subtle sound of API hate show, Rose talked very deeply on this as far as like China's gonna China, like whether we like it or not, China's gonna China. Like, unfortunately, that's just reality mm -hmm. of it. Whether that whether we have spiritual opiate epidemics and you know that I'm calling video games that from now on spiritual opiates. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call them that. <laughs> My favorite yeah. spiritual opiates. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, I mean, I guess I 100% agree with you guys. Like, this is this is something that needs to be parent like parentally taken care as a dad. This needs to be a parent thing. I would be fucking damned if the government was like, your daughter can't use her iPad for longer than an hour every day. Yeah, go ahead, Garrick. I, I would be so fucking frustrated with that because my daughter enjoys her iPad time and I already limit my fucking daughter's iPad time. I don't need big video, big, big, big spiritual opiate company <laughs> government to come in and tell me my fucking daughter is watching her fucking ipad for too long like like it's it's none of your goddamn business okay it's none of your goddamn business all right but china's gonna china they have dank food so i'll, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah bro it just seems like such a heavy-handed move is all like it just seems so heavy-handed like everything else they fucking do 
over there. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like yeah. they're like their cops. Yeah, are you pretty, said it, man. China, <laughs> China, going to China. Their 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 cops are pretty handed. Have you handed over there too? You know what I mean? Nice. We're gonna move into our second nice. <laughs> second, which is our hands up before we go any deeper on that, because me and Devin could talk on that shit all fucking A cab, baby, A cab. Um, our hands on segment, which is our second segment of the show, where we talk about some video games and or movies and or shows that we've been playing and or watching the past week, and we try to sell them to each other. We try to sell them to you guys. Garrick, you've been gone the longest, my friend. I want to start with you here. What have you been playing and or watching Spiritual Opiates? Um, hmm. Mm. Can we refer mm. to Spiritual Opiates as, as for movies as two? Can it just be a blanket Spiritual Opiates? I kind of want to use it in, like in all, in like all things. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. the Spiritual Opiate I've been uh, I've watched most recently uh, is it's a it's a it's a quirky little anime, kind of slice of lifey, called The Way of the House Husband. Have you guys heard of it? I have. Oh, I've actually watched this show. Devin, I who, have watched this. Was it you that was trying to sell us on this before? Or was it? I feel yeah. like it was also yeah. Kai. Didn't Kai watch it too? Yeah. Yeah. So my partner Sierra got me into it and showed it to me, and okay. I okay. loved it. It it is so wholesome. It is charming, and it just has like this cool like backstory that it never really elaborates a lot but yes yes no, it just show. like it just keeps you guessing <laughs> yeah. it is really great i've really really loved it i've also been watching eating zero it just shows i'll talk about that today but sure, um <laughs> sure. sure like it's so it's only like five episodes and each episode is only like 16 minutes long and it's just like a bunch of shorts it's like four or five shorts per episode but it's just how do I properly explain explain like what's going on? This dude literally was just like this super hardcore badass Yakuza motherfucker who was just like, I think it's time for me to settle down and wife up. And then he did. He wifed up hard. And now he lives in like this little this little apartment. And he's got like apparently Yakuza life transfers uh, really well over to the way of the house husband life. Because he's killing it, bro. Like he's he's literally like he's a good cook. He's a good cleaner. He's got all these cool tips and tricks. It's just so quirky and kind of fun. And it was a really nice break from like the typical shonen hack and slashy anime. Like it was really wholesome and inviting and super easy to watch. And it's funny. It is very funny. It's so funny. It's like deadpan funny. That that's like, exactly why I liked uh, Devil is a Part Timer so much because it feels the exact same way. It's just it's not crazy action, death things happening. It's just the devil working at McDonald's. Like <laughs> like sometimes you just need a good old slice of life yeah, animation. Dude, and that's you basically what this is. Uh, like dude. this dude just wiped up and he was like, "I'm gonna wipe up and leave the yakuza, and now I'm gonna be like the best stay at home husband ever." And then he does that. It's literally just that. I think they just released a live action adaptation. Like the say, it was so popular, they released the anime and then a live action adaptation the same year, like a couple of months apart. Okay, I need to watch live so. action adap adaptation. Now, yeah. Yeah, actually, now that I'm remembering, I feel like it was Xander who who brought it up to at some point or another. And then because okay. Devin and Xander were kind of like, oh, dude, it's so good. And I was like, fuck, I haven't watched this yet. I need to check this one out. Dude, with how short the episodes are, definitely check it. You can, you can watch it. it all in one night, like less than two mm -hmm. hours. Oh, yep. sick. I'm fucking down. I'm fucking down. Garrick, what have you been playing, my dad? A whole fucking lot of destiny. Let's two, go, brother. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Talk on it, baby. Like, Talk on it, dude. So I've had like a really, really long, as I'm sure you guys have too. Like I have a love hate relationship with the Destiny franchise as a whole. But boy, when it sucks me in, it generally tends to be like all the fucking way in. Like they announced crossplay, and then you know you and all the homies were just like, "All right, let's do the thing." Crossplay's open, and that was enough for me, dude. Like the fact that everybody was like, "We got a clan," and we squatted up, and I'm seeing like all those little fire teams for our little clan running around everywhere, enjoying all of this ridiculously f fun season 15 content. It's been great, honestly. Uh, it's a little overwhelming having not played heavily, and. 
since like before Shadowkeep, I think. Like I like I took I took like my big break just after Forsaken, and they've changed so much since then. And there's a lot. There's so much shit. And that's there's still a lot after everything's been sunsetted. Like a lot of shit. Like there's so much to do in that game. And so it's a little it's a little daunting at first, but uh yeah, man. It's just it's been great. I love dude, Destiny with the homies is probably one of the best gaming experiences that there is. Oh, like I, I really dude. believe that. Like uh, the mo- so much so that Devin and I actually don't have a game segment at all for our hands on stuff today. Uh, so we were just going to talk about some shit that we've watched and kind of just have this open Destiny conversation. Um, <clears throat> dude, th- this is the most fun I've had playing video games in so long, dude. Like, this is so great being able to play with you guys at night and just, like, do our fucking weekly bullshit. Like, Devin, s- speak on this, my guy. Speak on this, because I, I want to hear from you again on this. I know we talked about it on Saturday, but, like, you've been grinding. Like, you were the dude who introduced me to destiny period in my life. I need to hear from you on this some more. Dude. So, um, yeah, I've been grinding. <laughs> so I've, if, if you've been around uh, the whole show, I have been homesick the last couple of days. You can, as you can hear, my voice is kind of on the up and up, but still a little crackly. Um, I did nothing but play this goddamn game the last two days. Honestly, if I wasn't sleeping, I was, you know, squadding up with my guardians, trying to barely talk, <laughs> just just up trying to, to trying to and just grinding that seasonal content. I am already level 39 in the season pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's pretty yeah. nutty. I hate it. This, hate this it. seasonal activity is so much fun, too. Like, it I didn't is. think I wasn't going to like it very much, but it's like. It's just it's enjoyable. It's like a good quick little loop. And like you get enough loot at the end. You're just like, I feel like I earned every piece of that. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And I I feel you on the overwhelming aspect because like I I played this game religiously when it came out. Like I did the beta and everything. Same with the very first one. Um, I was so disappointed with the uh, Mercury Osiris DLC that I took a very long break from the game and I played it like very sparingly a couple times but nothing like consistently and i was just it the game like has its own like uh um was it collections thing where you can look at all the the guns and armor and everything that you've collected (laughs) did you know there's like 350 exotics in this goddamn game 350 exotic weapons and armor i know you gotta open your collections and you're like i don't have any fucking thing yeah I only have 146 out of the 350, and I'm just sitting there like, well, time to grind to get 200 dude, other exotics, I mean, even though I keep getting the same ones every time. Dude, I'm pretty sure I haven't even broken 100. I don't think I've broken 100 exotics. I haven't either. Dude, that's I'm at like 80. <laughs> insanity, Devin. It does. So much. <laughs> And dude, and all the triumphs and the titles. Like, I don't have a single title. I really need to. I want to get a title this season. Like, oh, dude, same. I don't know how, same. but I want a title. Like, it's, I yeah. need to grind. Put a little grind. fucking purple name <laughs> on the bottom. I need it. I just like, I see all those motherfuckers running by, and it's just like, it's just like Splicer. And I'm like, you fucking bitch. Give me that little thing. I want. Oh, it. ladies I and want. gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Ooh, Twitch. Xander's here. TVs. <laughs> it's Xander. Xander, baby. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? Oh, you know, it's fucking lit. Dude. Xander, I got a hold of you because I want to hear your thoughts on what it's been like playing Destiny 2 with the fucking boys, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's hear dude, from it. Has been, it has been absolutely amazing. I want to I preface this by saying that Destiny did me dirty. All right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did me dirty. As all Very of us. bad. Yep. Yep. All right? And I was, all agree. I, was, I was a sucker for love. I was a sucker for the beauty that is destiny um she pulled me in with her beautiful graphics and this this rich intense storyline only to be met with very stale gameplay 
And I was like, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. You know, we're, it's a rough patch. We'll, we'll, it'll be fine in, in a couple of months when there's a new update or a new DLC. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that way. No. And it wasn't that way for one month, two months, three, a year, almost, a, almost two years. Yeah. And then finally, yeah, finally, <laughs> she listened. She said, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You, you've. I've hurt you. Yeah. I've hurt you yeah. so bad. Yeah. Let me make it up to you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let me make it up to you and all your other guardian friends and reward you <laughs> the way you should be rewarded. And now we're at where we're at now with destiny, where we're actually reliving, you know, staying up till fucking three in the morning with our, with our homies grinding it out. We have been, Thinking, you know what? True. I got work. I got work the next, I got work the next morning, but you know what? Fuck it. I want to, I want to keep playing this game. I haven't mm-hmm. had that experience with any other game in so long. And they're finally while. bringing it back. And it's only going to get better come February. Mm-hmm. Let's fucking come go. December when Let's the, uh, go, the 30 year anniversary, oh, the 30th is anniversary is going to be. So yeah, good. that's right. That's right. Even sooner. Yeah. Give me that gala horn. <laughs> Lord, oh, yeah. I, will this, I will. I will say this. I'm not too fixated on the Galahorn, to be honest. I'm more. I'm more like when it comes to gear. Like gear's one thing, but it's just just knowing that what I'm doing is going to benefit me in the long run, and it's, and I'm having fun. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest. That's the biggest te- takeaway from all this because it wasn't fun it wasn't fun doing the same shit over and over and over again and then you see your clan drop one by one and two by two the next thing you know you're a lone guardian going into strikes by yourself or trying to be like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and attempt this dungeon by myself why because you know i still love destiny no matter how much she hurt me i still love her that's facts and and xander i hope your soul heals in the process of of getting over the abusiveness that we all experience at Destiny Two. Xander, thank you for coming in, baby. We'll we'll, we'll talk to you later, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll Absolutely. we'll play Destiny guys, after stream. Yes, we will for we'll, sure. Yeah, you guys yeah, have we'll, a good one. Yeah, you too, baby. Bye. <laughs> later, Devin. What have you watched since our show on Saturday? Oh, guys, so, <laughs> God, it's nothing. <laughs> uh, no sauce, three days. <laughs> Gracias, <senor. laughs> um so i haven't watched anything that new besides re-watching the witcher nightmare of the wolf everybody needs to go watch that it's amazing here's the thing i felt a little bit of nostalgia because i heard in a podcast i can't remember exactly what podcast about a little movie from um 2012 judge dread oh 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 yes wait like yes like urbans like dread yes like like, like carl, carl urban yes. yeah okay carl yeah urban. okay okay yeah. all right all right i so see I you i decided to rewatch this movie and i still fucking love it and why has there not been a sequel since then i do not know because this is like the human version of fucking RoboCop and it's amazing and the action sequences are great and uh, I, Carl Urban is Dread. He is so good at playing Dread. Like even better than Stallone was back in the day. You know I mean, what I Carl mean? Urban's just a really yeah, good way actor better. in general, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I pick these back up on Midgar. Meet my new friends, Dez and Troy. Together, they destroy. <laughs> Dude, I so the the fucking movie. I feel like it flopped because all the like weird like forty year old like neckbeard dudes that were like diehard Judge Dread fans of like the original mm-hmm. just didn't think this one needed to be remade or anything. So they just like review bombed it, and like everybody just like yeah. Word of mouth and everything, you know. It has a seven out of ten on IMDb, uh, um, too. But uh, I really, I really want to see a sequel to this. Like, there, it can totally be done. I actually, I need yes. to look up the box, the box office, because I feel like the box office 
was not too terrible. It was like 90 minutes of bullet hell, man. It was just fun. Like it was yeah. just a great movie to watch. Like you, if you, if, if you're like an action, like you like the, like action flicks, it's a no brainer. Like the sequences mm-hmm. were so cool. Ah, uh, I see. So its budget was 45 million and it only did 41.5 million. So I know it was not a success box office wise, but maybe they can do like a soft reboot again because we are coming up on, you know, 10 years since then. Um, Netflix could pick it up. Yeah. What what if we see like Netflix dread or something like that? Do you really want that after we just saw that? that resident evil <laughs> okay let me rephrase oh, that's that fair. <laughs> hbo hbo can Ooh. knocking on the door Ooh. judge dread please judge dread can, i feel like that's too close dread? to Pe- peacemaker though i feel like that's no, too close that. to what the fuck peacemaker no. shows you know no, you those are so? totally different those are totally different right. totally happen. different okay. peacemaker is going to be like a comedy action movie where judge dread is just straight up i'm going to rip your spinal cord out and then shoot yeah this yeah m- this person in the face with slapstick future a action. rocket launcher yeah i'm down yeah i don't know i'm down i'm gonna throw people Where? off 60 foot buildings like 60 story buildings and not care <laughs> that's what judge dread is yes. it was, it's just a great action movie and it's a great bullet hell and um it's i i would like to see it it come back in one way or another um other than that yeah destiny <laughs> Zan- Xander in the chat asks, how do you guys feel about Netflix becoming known uh, as the franchise Maddie's? franchise savior? Uh, I think that is I feel like that like Netflix is still too 50 50 at the moment mm. in order for us to even like entertain giving them yeah, that title. Bro, they, like <laughs> they're, they're so hit and miss they sometimes. Have their own shit after one season. <laughs> you can arguably yeah. be saying that HBO is more of a savior. Because uh, yeah. they they are they are saving the DC Universe franchise right now by putting everything on there and continuing on the web series shows and putting out the Snyder Cut, even though it's not all that good anyways, because DC movie kind of sucks. But <laughs> they used to, uh, hey, the H- people asked for it and they got it. Yep. HBO is so busy, like saving the DC that they can't even save their own fucking app from working correctly. So like <laughs> it works correctly for me all the time. You know Dude, what? I have that so many goddamn more issues? issues with that app. Oh my god, bro! I, I had have to more issues with restart it on my T. Te- like I had to like reboot my fucking TV, like yeah. all the software to get it to work one time. It like God I... forbid I try to rewind anything. I have more issues with Disney Plus than I do with HBO. Like if I try to use the HBO, I mean the uh, Disney Plus app on my TV, and it's not an old smart tv it's like it's a freaking seven series samsung um i get delay like the the voice and sound will be like five to six seconds ahead of what i'm actually getting on the picture yeah dude that's my least favorite (laughs) video streaming like problem ever like fuck desynced audio (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh my god uh xander also asks uh what about the franchise graveyard also, Drax says, uh, stop this action movie talk because make me want to watch Predator and Rainbow. But yeah, what about Franchise Graveyard? Does that work for you guys? Also, talk about it really quick. I got to go blow my nose real fast. Um, I mean, I could see that Franchise Graveyard savior, not so much. I mean, it looks like the Resident Evil movie franchise is about to die there, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like... <laughs> it like got revived there and then it's going to fucking die there. Like, And it sucks to see that because Infinite Darkness was good. The animated was great dude. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. Binge that one and like in one whole evening because like, that was like another eight episode one, right? Yeah, the, yeah, like, like all half hour, forty five minute episodes. But yeah, I will say, it, and even that, got a cop costume right. Yeah, that's true. Like literally, their costumes look like they came off of fucking spirit Halloween shelves. <laughs> um, but like on another note of that, they there have they've had great success with their animated department we could maybe say that it is a uh, franchise savior in the animated world because there's a lot of animated shows on there that have been doing phenomenal you know um anime cgis and like adult and kids animation all do exceedingly well on netflix yeah yeah and same with the um 
Amazon, I mean, Invincible, Chef's Kiss. Chef's Big kiss. old Chef's Kiss. Big old Chef's Kiss. Yeah. Anyways, so I didn't really watch much myself either. Uh, I kind of just did a Denzel Washington marathon over the weekend. <clears throat> I went through the entirety of the Equalizer movies. I went through the Book of Eli. I went through like all of his old like early 2000s movies. Like I just had a big old mm. Denzel Washington marathon over the weekend. And I just wanted to talk about for a quick second. Denzel Washington doesn't get enough goddamn credit for being the actor that he is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's so good. You know what I'm saying? I got a question for you. What? What what Marvel hero or character would Denzel Washington play? No. No. He's too no. good for it. He's too good for <laughs> no. it. He's too good MCU for it. MCU doesn't even deserve him. They don't. They don't deserve him. Yeah. MCU doesn't deserve him or Will Smith. Period. Yeah. Denzel's too Untouch- good for Marvel. Yeah. I, I will say The Book of Eli is by far my favorite Denzel movie. So it's such an underrated film. It is. So underrated. It very much is. It's so the, good. the Equalizer it's, it's was the original John Wick, though. Yeah, absolutely. I fucking love the Equalizer, dude. Oh, uh, he so doesn't good. really do bad movies, honestly. Ever? Like he just kind of ever. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen a bad Denzel Washington movie. Period. Ever in history. He's so nothing bad. below a seven. He's the yeah. man, dude. He's honestly, just, yeah. He's infinitely goaded. Book of Eli is, is is also my favorite. Yeah, uh, it's the Fallout uh, movie that we all wanted. Honestly, Book of Eli. Minus Dude, I just wasn't now. expecting the ending. I wasn't twist, expecting so. how it went out at all. Yeah, no, yeah, not even a little. A variant of Nick Fury, he says. I don't think Samuel Jackson already is a variant of Nick fucking Fury. Like, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think we could ever get. Like, I feel like yeah. Nick Fury is is perpetually and infinitely. Nick Fury in every universe. Like, I don't think there's any way that would, that would ever change. Anyways, what if Nick Fury is a Nexus being? <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I can see it. I can see them turning them into that for the MCU. That'd be great, dude. Yeah. Anyways, let's move into our headlining and last segment here tonight. We are doing some rapid fire nerdy gaming questions. So the idea that we're gonna do with this. I'm going to ask the question. I want Garrick to answer, then Devin to answer, and then I'll answer. They're going to be rapid fire, quick questions. Okay. If you guys want to talk about anything after we all answer, keep it just a little bit brief. We are kind of coming to the last like 20 minutes of the show here. Let's fucking do it. You boys ready? Yup. Also, I want to apologize to our use listeners and viewers. I've been having an allergy attack for the past three days, and I am a mess. Dude, I've been trying right to now. sniffle okay. off screen all fucking episodes, so I, just, I get I it. Been, I keep muting my shit. I'm such a mess. Dude, right all now, of us. Dude. Listen to all of us. Sticky my voice boys, is crackly. Like just fucking... We're sneezing. We're coughing. I know. Welcome to the good cracking show where we keep it cracking. I know. With our my voice is cracking. (laughs) (laughs) Look at a good cracking where we're all cracking all the time. Boys, are you ready? Yes. Yes. What is your favorite video game of all time? Garrett, go. Majora's Mask. Devin. Final Fantasy X. Oh, Final Fantasy Seven. Majora's Mask, really? Yes. Yeah, it's a great man. game. It's a great game. I have I have very, very pure childhood memories of that game that are untarnished by childhood bullshit. And I refuse to let it go. Yeah, dude, I, I, I get it. I, my I almost said Ocarina of Time. I almost said Ocarina, but I have definitely just played uh, Final Fantasy X way more, way more. Also, uh, I want to say this before we continue on chat for all these questions. Please put your yeah. answers in Drop the chat your as well. Answers please. In the yeah, chat. No, we want to please, see them. please. We, yeah. we want to see these. I see Morbid answer with EVO search for Eden. I for a second I thought Morbid was talking about uh did you guys ever hear of a game called Eve of Extinction? Mm-mm. Which was like a really goofy kind of like third person action game where you get these like like alien weapons that you use to fight other people. It's it was weird, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot. I'm talking like 2002. I want to say it's an old yeah. game. It's a really old game, but it was fun, dude. Like gotta... OG Xbox title kind of all game. Right. Drax, Xander, your favorite game of all time. Just 
Also, don't even think about it. First I need, thing a, that comes to I need to clarify, too, that like my answer was Final Fantasy VII, but I have a hard time compartmentalizing whether my favorite game is actually Final Fantasy VII original or if it's God of War now. Because like I, I struggle Ooh. with that, and I'm even including The Last of Us Part Two in this because I have... The past few years of video games have been really hard for me because I've fallen in love with a lot of fucking video games the past few years. I'm, I'm with you. On I that. really feel you with God of War, though. Like it's basically a close second or a first on basically everything on the yeah, list these days. God, God of War is at my top five, honestly. Yep. Um, Destiny coming coming in hot for Xander. Not surprised at all. Totally mm-hmm, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Drax has got Half Life too. Oh, All right. good choice. <laughs> yeah, that's a great goddamn choice. Classic. Second question. What is a game you thought you'd like, but actually hated? Garrick. The Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Seriously? And we'll, we'll, it we'll, wasn't we'll come, because we'll come back. Story. Yeah, go, 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 we'll, go, we'll go, 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 go. Uh, uh, Devin, go. Call of Duty Cold War. I I feel I feel like that's not a hot take. I feel like a lot of us felt like that, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was excited because it was continuing on the Black Ops story from like the very first Black Ops, and the campaign was kind of good. Okay, but oh, actually, no. Now Valorant. Xander says Valorant. Valorant. <laughs> Valorant. Uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> so I will take. Three. I will resend that. I will take a mulligan because I hate Valorant so much and I've talked so much shit about Valorant on this show that I forgot it was even a game for a second. <laughs> My answer is No Man's Sky. That's bad. Yeah, I can I see bought, that. I'll accept that answer. I, I, yeah, bought, yeah. I understand that completely. I yeah, bought it I, opening I, night. Opening night, I got I got home with that fucking game. You were so hyped, weren't you? Same. God damn it, man. Like, <laughs> I cannot believe they did us like that. Yeah. I cannot believe they did us like that, dude. Yeah, more of the all the, those are all really good answers. It's true. We all had really good answers. Yeah, that was a good one. <sighs> God, I'm a mess right now. Third question. So, what? <laughs> Garrick, what are you gonna say? Are you gonna oh, say? I wanted to, did you guys want to know why I didn't like Oh, I can yes, keep it short. Actually, I give it. Give us the so, quick one rundown of what your fucking beef is with this beautiful game called The Last of Us. Yeah. So, Nerd. I really struggled with combat gameplay in some in some of the uh, perspectives because of the angle that they chose to portray because of the storytelling mechanics, and it was literally just enough of a gameplay issue for me that like I couldn't get over it, and I I couldn't look I couldn't I couldn't look past some of the gameplay issues I personally had. To like get what? through like the like beautiful what? story underneath, like dude, I just like th- so, and this could be very, very different in be- in The Last of Us Two. I because I, I I will straight up say I haven't played it. Um, well, once you but, tell like, me what it is, I'll be able to clarify for you. <laughs> so like, I just felt like a lot of the combat stuff. Like, I I know there's like it, they had like a lot of that grounded in realism, uh, that they were kind of going for, but I. Dude, there. I just found some of the encounters so frustrating because of the way they set them up mechanically that it it wasn't as smooth as I would have liked it to be because it played out like it would have played out basically like in real life, you know, like it would that it has like it was like too real if that makes sense. Like okay. I couldn't. I wanted. I wanted some of that surrealism to to smoothen out the gameplay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that complaint you have is exactly one of the reasons why I like the game. Same, literally same. See, it's and, very and much which I get thing, completely. Yeah. Which I get completely. <laughs> Xander Garrick, here's my opinion. Or no, here's why you're wrong. <laughs> no, uh, Arnell what? likes to think that he's the 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 pinnacle of of definition and answers on. Oh, here. <laughs> get get fuck. No, the fuck I don't. No, the fuck I don't. Get Xander, well, said I don't it here. think it was a bad game. It just wasn't for me. Like I'm sure it earned everything that it's gotten, but it was just like I just had enough issues with some of the gameplay personally that like I didn't bother with the second game. But okay, we can move on now. Well, what I what I will say is that all of that is amplified in The Last of Us Part 2. So if you loved all that stuff in The Last of Us Part 1, you're going to love it even more. Because, like, all the combat and stuff, it, Seven, <laughs> all the combat and stuff in, uh, in The Last of Us Part 2 is even smoother 
and even more realistic and 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 very much uh, as I believe Morbid said in the chat, it was like the camera angle and filters <clears throat> give me emotions. Yeah, like the shaky cam and stuff is even more prominent during the combat because they're trying to make it feel more realistically frantic. Uh, because you're fighting more fellow survivors than you are zombies in The Last of Us Part Two, So there's a lot of survival aspects that are happening in the heat of the moment in The Last of Us Part Two that, like, they're trying to amplify on. So, unfortunately, you probably won't like The Last of Us Part Two though, but I'm telling you, dude. Maybe I'll watch a playthrough. There you go. Well, we, play, we, plan, we plan on having uh, uh, Devin play The Last of Us Part Two once he gets his PS4. Uh, we'd love to have oh, you yeah. sit in and watch that with us because I'm gonna be watching it too, and I'm oh, it's gonna be so Absolutely. much fun. Dude. Hell yeah, let's Next it. question: What is a game you didn't expect to enjoy but ended up liking? Gerko. <sighs> Wait, what? I thought it was what so popular the opposite, game that... the opposite this time. Yeah. So what like, what is wait, it, what is that? a game that everyone seems to love but you don't like? But now the next one is what's a game oh. you didn't expect to enjoy but ended up liking after all? Oh my bad, I skipped this game. Detroit Become Human. The developer owner is a piece of shit, but <laughs> no. ah! like. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I I literally tried this game because I enjoyed Until Dawn and the gameplay progression looked similar. And then Detroit Become Human ended up being so much fucking better story wise and so much more enthralling in the way that like the characters lives were literally in your hands the whole fucking time. And I fucking flipped out when I got to the end of the goddamn game and I accidentally got both of the fucking chicks killed. I was like, fuck! Like, <laughs> I ruined it! <laughs> so my my first playthrough of that game, uh, I accidentally got the cop killed in, like, the f second mission. Um, <laughs> and I could yeah, not dude. use him for the rest of the fucking game that I had to replay it. Uh, Devin, your turn. I just want to point out, just ask Drax if he likes the McRib, and his <laughs> reply was only if I need to clean my ba all of my bowels out in five minutes. <laughs> That's not a real answer, Jax. Drax, Drax. That's not a real answer. Is it a yes or a no? Do you or do you not like it? Devin, go. Knockout City. That's true. That's true, dude. Yeah, you yep. didn't. You I did didn't not want to play like it at first. Mm -hmm. I did not want to because I did not like the art style at first. I did not want to play it. Um, and uh, I ended up playing it and I got really sweaty in that game. <laughs> like, <laughs> unimaginably it's sweaty. Fun. Um, but yeah, that game. Mine was Apex. I hated yeah. Apex when it first came out. Uh, I only played like maybe two hours of it. And then these fuckers. Got me into Apex all that time later, all that time later. And I fell in love with it for a little while. It was great, but Destiny's better. Let's fucking go, boys. Let's fucking go, boys. <laughs> Question number five. What game have you spent the most number of hours on? Go. Monster Hunter. Hands fucking down. No contest there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Devin. Yeah. Just as a franchise. Monster Hunter. Destiny. Oh, yeah, that's not surprising in the least bit. That's not surprising in the least goddamn bit. Like, I'm including the first, like, the first Destiny as well in that conversation. Because, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I mean, they're basically the same game now. They just put a bunch of the content in Destiny, too. But yes, Destiny. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII is mine. I 100%ed the fuck out of the original PlayStation 1 version of it when I got older. Not when I first played it. When I got older, I completed the fuck out of that game. That game is so long. If you try to find all the collectibles, all the, like, Omega weapons, you're trying to find Ruby weapon, Emerald weapon, all the shit, that game is real fucking long. I probably spent, I don't know, upwards near, like, 500, 600, hours, 100 hours on that goddamn game, getting all my characters to max level 99, and then, like, replaying and doing all the shit, dude. The big material in Rocket Town, yeah, 
Yeah, morbid. You get it. It's oh my god, dude. Next this question. Is making me want to play. <laughs> oh, dude, I know, I know. And you, and you still have to play the remake, don't you? I have to beat the remake. Ah, that's I've, right. That's I'm. Right. I think I'm like 26 hours into it. Good, good. You're you're getting there. You're getting there. Next question. If you had to marry the last video game character you played, who would it be? Garrett, go. I mean, I I guess I'm marrying my warlock on Destiny. Oh, hey, let's go! Let's yeah. go! Let's yeah, go! Yeah, I guess I'm marrying marrying my hunter in Destiny. Yeah, my Titan, my Titan. I know. Uh, question seven: If you had to live in the world of the last game you played, what world would it be? Destiny. Destiny <laughs> for all of us. Hey, oddly yeah. enough, yeah. Oddly yeah. enough, it's not Destiny for me. It's Spellbreak. Uh, Morbid says Final Fantasy VII is easily my second most played game. I can talk Final Fantasy. You're my new favorite. Morbid, you're my new favorite. Um, let's see. Uh, number eight. Have you ever had a crush on a video game character, Garrick? Go. Yeah, bro. Cami White from Street Fighter. <laughs> that was so fast. <laughs> I fucking love it, dude. It's uh, it, bro. Devin, go. Lulu from Final Fantasy X. Oh, that's so fucking funny. Riku from Final Fantasy X. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Riku was a close second. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, I like I like the the big titty goth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> respect. Yeah, I know, right? I know. Put some some respect on that, baby. Put some respect on that. <laughs> oh my god. Number nine. What was the first game you ever remember? playing garrick go uh legend of zelda link to the past <laughs> okay i'm sorry i'm just laughing who is the chick from bayonetta <laughs> i don't know bayonetta <laughs> yeah, um, the chick from bayonetta is bay i will say that she is bay oh netta she's bae. She she's wearing bae. them nets while she's bay you know she what i'm bae. saying yeah she is bae. Ah. Bae is italian for a bay in fishnets <laughs> And confirm. <laughs> I'm t- oh god damn it. I'm i I'm timing you out in the chat, Devin. I can't fucking stay anywhere. <laughs> Where's your goddamn name? Where's your goddamn name? So first game I ever played uh was Sonic 2 on the Sega Genesis. It's not working, is it? Working? Throwing it way back. <laughs> oh damn it, I can't I can't time you out. So every character dead or alive extreme beach volleyball. <laughs> And then he said, "Night, how dare you, Xander? How dare you <laughs> fucking mock us with the shit?" Okay. <laughs> Ernell, Ernell, what about you? Uh, Duck Hunt. Duck on, Hunt uh, nice. SNES. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a very very first game I ever Nez. played. The second game I ever played uh, was this weird like unicycle game that was also on. SNES. I don't remember asking you the second game you ever played. Next sir. question. Next question. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, have you ever pretended to be sick to get out of something so you could play a game? Bro, oh, fuck yeah. I yeah, literally yeah. have taken yeah. days <laughs> off sure. for game releases. Every like, single one of us. Yeah. Like Skyrim. It, Skyrim. Yeah. Skyrim. I did it for God of War and Red Dead Redemption I'm, 2. And I'm, those I'm, came out the same year. Can I, can I have a, a story? A short story. Yes, short story. Go ahead. When I was in eighth grade, this game came out called Kingdom Hearts 2. Mm. I wanted to play that game so bad. My spring vacation was coming up. That game came out in the middle of my week of the week before spring vacation. My mom let me fake being sick (laughs) to play Kingdom Hearts 2. And I beat the whole game before before uh the end of spring break oh but yeah. yes that's a clutch ass game yeah that's a clutch ass yeah. game um i've done it for a lot of games like pff, fucking call of duty modern warfare 2 uh fucking final fantasy 12 that was a mistake uh like there's, there's been a lot of uh that game is great i don't know fuck, what you're saying fuck <laughs> final fantasy 12 are you kidding me i beat the entire game only using one character fuck that game uh, <laughs> the game is amazing. I'm playing it right now. It's actually it's, on Switch. It's it's fucking Star Wars in Final Fantasy. That's all it is. Anyways, um, do great things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need another Star Wars story. I don't fucking need it. I don't need it. Um, or do you? 
That's fair. That's fair. What game mm-hmm. did you last complete, Garrett? Go. Okay, I have a I have a question about this. Is it one hundred percent or just like beat the story? Be, beat the story. Well, let's death, do both. Uh, the, let's do both. Let's do both. Let's do both. Death Death's Door for just completed the story. Last game I one hundred percented was Miles Morales. Devin, go. Um. I never 100% games. I have an ever growing library. <laughs> trash, back, trash, back. trash. But get, 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 good. Uh, get good. The last game that I actually completed <laughs> was Resident Evil 8. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I play I play a lot of multiplayer games and I have this nah, ever growing problem yeah. with jumping from game to game to game to game to game. <laughs> You know, because you're I mean. a sweat factory. You're a sweat factory. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so for beating a game in general, uh, a Plague Tale Innocence, I think was the last one that I beat most recently. Uh, 100% was also uh, Miles Morales. Oh, God. Oh, um, yeah, brother. That's actually the. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That was the last one. That was the last one. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Um uh what game are you playing right now? Garrett, go. Destiny 2. Destiny 2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Until uh same for me until tomorrow when Lake comes out. I am so <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> no sauce three is deus. <laughs> Get it the fucking gather, brother. Oh my god, I yeah. hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Uh yeah, Lake comes out tomorrow and I am so so damn excited for that game uh finally coming out so i'll be playing the fuck out of that here pretty soon um oh oh what game do you want to play next is the next question garrett go golf club wasteland <laughs> yes yes Devin, you go. don't want to play golf club wasteland it looks so it's good. a really really far away thing but my hype is ever growing for starfield of course that's it. like the game i that's the game i think about all the time Starfield. That's what I want. Um the I, No Man's Sky, we want it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, I just I just said Lake. Um but if I have to pick another one, uh probably God of War Ragnarok, which is coming out this winter. Uh <laughs> it's not coming. It's coming out winter. No fucking A, bud. Yeah. I know. I Suck my was. ass. I was. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my answer being like. Um uh next question. In your opinion, what is the best games console? Should we go by history uh, uh, or right now? Let's say history. Say right Let's now. say in history. Should... Let's say in history. history. History? Yeah. History. Well, okay. Are we going off of specs or are we going opinion, off of opinion opinion piece? Just go. Just what first thing in mind. Garrett, go. GameCube. Devin. Xbox 360. Ooh, PlayStation 2. Fuck you, Devin. All, all phenomenal. <laughs> I, I've owned I all of these. I know, I know. We've all had these. I mean, good. see, here's the thing, though. We can look at each other, and we can look at all these consoles and be like, yeah, those were all pretty great. <laughs> those were pretty hot, Yeah, bro. which is those the great were... thing. <laughs> yeah. But if we're going to go with consoles right now, it's obviously the Series X, not including PC, because PC is a, a platform that nothing can touch. You know what I mean? But it, I mean, it's pretty, gotta be the, the PS5 hype. is pretty hype. It's so hype you can't even fucking get it anywhere because they're getting. Bombed. I mean, same with same with the Series X. You can't even get the Series <laughs> S anymore because everybody's Dude, like, "Fuck, I, I can't, I can't get a PS5 and I can't get a Series X." So everybody's like, bought up all the Series S's and they're yeah, out of stock everywhere. Yeah, now. yeah. But I, I, I say that just solely off of uh, two things. The hardware is just slightly better than the PS5. Just slightly runs at a cooler temperature. Uh, the fans are quieter and um, it has a better hard drive in it. Um, and the other thing, Game Pass. Morbid says uh, N64. It's the only console to have StarCraft on it. That is true. And StarCraft. Yep. And that version of StarCraft good. was ass. <laughs> so ass. <laughs> so ass. But the game was good. The but it had good. it. <laughs> yeah. But it had it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next question. Are PC gamers really superior to console players? Garrett, go. Bruh, fuck no. Play on whatever you want. Devin? They're not. They're not. I exclusively play on a controller all the time unless I'm playing like a game like Daisy or Rust. 
and uh, I shit on people all the time unless it's Destiny because that game matchmaking is broken. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say yeah because PC Master Race. Fuck you, dweebs. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you, nerds. PC you Mustard console, Race. Nerds, you know what I'm saying? Fuck you, you cannot guys. say that to me when I own a PC that's more superior. <laughs> <laughs> True. PC I mustard race. PC master you. race. More like mustard race. I you know what I'm you saying? To pieces. I hate you to be. Obviously, I'm being facetious. I I do not play video games where the fuck you want to play video games. I yeah. don't fucking give a shit. If you like playing them on PC, you're probably a fucking asshole anyway. So it's like, <laughs> what's your opinion yeah. on Fortnite, Garrett? Go. Uh, I actually Fortnite man. I originally I actually pre ordered the early access before it was a battle royale and i liked that iteration of the game don't like it currently just not for me devin i hate it <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say i just hate it for i sure. don't like it I've, sure. I've i've definitely i've probably put like close to seven or eight hours into that game and i don't like it yeah i don't personally like it either but i can see why people do I mean, it's, you know, no matter how much I hate it, it's obviously made a massive impact in the games industry. If it wasn't, I'd argue that if it wasn't for Fortnite, video games would not be as popular as they are right now. That's just my opinion. You know, I I, I can see that. But, um, yeah, it's a social zeitgeist, dude. They, they fucking nailed it with Fortnite. They figured it out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Next question. Uh, have you ever watched a Twitch stream? of course yeah. yeah 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 now mind you guys this is just from an article that i read i was like we have to do these we have to fucking do this it's actually 50 we're gonna do the other 25 at a later date um hell yeah let's see uh 17 have no 18 have you ever streamed yourself on twitch or youtube duh um no yeah not at all ne never, never never yeah never actually we're not even live right now this is a pre-recorded uh, -uh. uh thing that we all this was scheduled in the chat and everything we future proofed it yep. we future proofed it's it scripted. you know um yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> um 19 have you ever used a walkthrough yeah dude fuck yeah i use walkthroughs for stories. shit all the time I got some stories. Yes, I, when I was a little kid and uh, used to stay home sick from school, would use all of my parents' printer and ink printing off guides to video games off of Game From Facts. Game Facts. Yeah! Yeah, Game Facts. Yeah. I, I yeah. printed off the whole guide to Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Dude, same! <laughs> Let's fucking print like it was like fifty sheets, dude. Just a whole thing of fucking oh. printer ink. <laughs> Morbid Brevin, are you me? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude, me too. Me too. I actually have uh my Chrono Cross walkthrough book somewhere. I just don't remember where the fuck I put it. That's like one of the last mm. ones I like actually bought a the physical book for. Um, Devin, go ahead. I Every Final Fantasy game that comes out, I buy the uh, the special edition official guide of. Like I I have the Final Fantasy 15 one, and it's a hard book cover and everything. It's super fucking nice. But I, yeah, I, no, I I still yeah. buy guides to this day, but only for games like that. You know, I I was yeah. doing that until Final Fantasy. Actually, I think 12. 12 was mm -hmm. the first one that I did not do that with. I have um, all of them. That's because the last ass, game guide so. I bought was, I want to say Breath of the Wild. Oh, okay. You okay. should see the um, you should see the uh, the Kingdom Hearts two one. It has like it's like a it's like a four hardcover one, and it has like all these different sleeves and artworks. That's really nice. I have that as well. So. Next question. <clears throat> Let's burn through these last ones pretty fast here. Okay, so uh. Yeah. <clears throat> Number 20, what's the best weapon you've ever used in the game? Garrett, go. Leviathan Axe, hands down. Devin? Hands down, Leviathan Axe. The shotgun in Halo. 
Leviathan Axe and God of War, period, is like one of yeah. the best feeling fucking weapons in a game. So Ooh, the Destiny ever. bow is pretty Destiny lit. Destiny bow's good. Yeah, actually, the Trinity Ghoul in fucking Destiny is hype right now. <laughs> I'm going to go with the just, Trinity Ghoul. The way, the way they made the Leviathan Axe and God of War feel, like having, like calling it back and then like hits his hand, goes like, ting! And like the way that it shakes in your hand in the controller. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dude, it's, so got, it's got good. such a good weight. Like yeah. the, the weight of the weapon feels so real in game. It's it feels so good. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Uh, 21. Have you ever had to stop playing a game because it was too scary? Garrett, go. Yes. Yeah, dude, all the time. I'm a little bitch boy, though. I shelved Subnautica because I couldn't. I literally can't handle the thalassophobia. I fucking swear to God, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I couldn't even swim away from the ship, dude. I had to give up. Kevin, what was yours? Um, what was yours? What's what's the one that comes to mind? Outlast Two. Outlast Two. Yeah. The one that comes to mind yeah. for me is Amnesia. Because I played it. I got I got into the basement of the castle where it's like flooded and there's invisible enemies. You can only see them with their footprints in the water. And I was like, fuck this game. I'm out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Fuck that game, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The water thing. Morbid. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. Um, uh, 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 has a game storyline ever made you cry? Yeah. God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2 both did it to me, actually, in of recent memory. Dead. Yes. Yeah. Which yes, one was the first 10 minutes of Last of Us. <laughs> first 10 minutes of Last of Us, the very end of the Walking Dead video games, the mm. Telltale ones. Uh, I actually had a story that I've talked to you guys about of this with before, but I cried during my lunch break at work uh, because of the ending of The Walking Dead. That fucked me up. Yeah. So. Oh, bad. Devin, go. Also, the ending of Final Fantasy 15. That one did make me feel some kind of way. I didn't tear up to it, though. It did. It did kind of like give me the the gut feeling, the gut feeling. Yeah, a Xander. little bit, just a yeah. little bit. I was really invested into that game so much. So I've been replaying it. And uh, yeah, I just got done with Tannabry. <laughs> Uh, Last of Us Part 2, also, the ending of that game is fucking heart-wrenching. Um, mm. uh, God, my nose! Uh, uh, Jesus, 23. Mm. What's your favorite fighting class? Warrior, Mage, Rogue, and why? As examples. Garrett, go. Uh, warrior, because Hunter slash Ranger isn't listed. Fuck you, whoever wrote this question. Well, I I would yeah. say like whatever you would want. I think those are just sort of like giving examples. So would would you oh, pick just a hunter, hunter then, other dude? Pup- yeah, all the time. I want if if I can play a class that allows me to shoot a bow and arrow and have a pet, I'm picking it every fucking time. Yeah, Devin, um, I would go with rogue because I like to shoot bows and arrows, and I like to use one handed swords. And if I'm fast. You ain't got nothing to hit, so I don't need that armor. <laughs> <laughs> do uh do paladins count? I feel like I always like try I to feel like that falls in warrior. I feel like that falls in warrior. Like I, well, I feel like warrior, mage, rogue, those are like the three that everything is based off of. Those are like you know the pinnacle I mean? classes. Yeah. Yeah. So sure, essentially warrior, you'd be a rogue then, too. Yeah, warrior. Yeah. It's my thing. The yeah. only reason I ever pick paladins because they're like warriors that heal. And I like yeah. being a support character. A lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your favorite game genre? Oh, dude, ARPGs, hands down. <laughs> um, <sighs> yeah, RPG, role playing game. Doesn't matter if it's Final Fantasy or Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Just role playing game, RPG. I mean, Destiny's an RPG. It's a first person shooter RPG. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, th- it's a looter shooter, and you know it. I mean, it's still an RPG. Look at all those systems, dog. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's got a light power system just like fucking Diablo does. You know what I mean? The, the, the sure. RPG semantics argument is so fucking dumb because every game has yeah. RPG elements in it. Like, yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Um, RPG is just the defining, like, like uh, foundation for video games nowadays because everything has it, you know, uh, leveling up perks different items, the way they affect your stats, stuff like that, you know. 
Yep. Uh, mine would be third person action adventure. Yeah. Yeah. I love I love those kind of games so fucking much. I do yeah. also like You're... RPGs, but like third person action adventures just like fucking do it for me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Last question. Do you, yeah, you for tonight, make it, buddy? For tonight, <laughs> I, I'm gonna try, dude. You see my right? You see my eye? My eye is a goddamn yeah. mess right now, dude. That I, looks like pink eye. <laughs> no, it's not pink eye. Jesus Christ, it's tearing up because it's, it's, it's an pillow, itch. Devin. It's an itch that's in my right nostril, so it's making my eye all flare up and shit. Last question: Do you prefer multiplayer games or to go solo? <laughs> Uh, the answer to that question is a simple yes, and I play them for different reasons. I like story games on my own, yeah. and I love, I like di- multiplayer games for the homies. Like I like them both for different reasons. They're both great. Yeah, that that's hard to say. Uh, oh, I'm just gonna say yes too because I. Yeah. 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 I, can't. I mean, it is like I like them. They're for both different just reasons. tight for their own reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I like mm-hmm. them for different reasons. They have they have a time and place. You know what I mean. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Our schedule this week is a little bit weird, so we can't really give too many details because we're kind of sort of figuring out the details right now. What I can say is that tomorrow we are not doing a gameplay stream for uh, support of the day off Twitch movement. Uh, That's all I can really say. We're still kind of figuring out things for our Saturday show. At the moment, we might move it to a different day. We probably won't, though. Uh, We're trying to get our ducks in a row on this. In the meantime, we will be here. Just plan for us to be here on Saturday at 12 until we say otherwise. So uh, we love you guys. Uh, God, my face. Breathe it out, big guy. Uh, finish strong finish strong my coach always told me oh uh, god i fucking hate this because this has been the good cracking podcast <laughs> oh my god your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news reviews and discussions that you want to hear uh and not listen to my allergy attacks every tuesday at 7 p.m and saturday at 1 p.m right here at twitch.tv did I say one? I meant 12. Uh, 12 p.m. right here at twitch.tv slash and show. If you enjoy the show, you can support us by subscribing below, going to our YouTube channel by clicking the link in the about section right down there on our Twitch page and going and clicking that bell and big red button or... Uh, by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken with an exclamation mark and leaving a review there. But until next time, be good to each other and the make rib oh. is God. You can't say that when you had it smush motioned. Smush motioned. I know. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye. <laughs>